All right, guys, let's talk about drive shafts. I think this is important. If we don't get this part right, we can damage the transmission. Now, yes, I'm making tons of videos uh, because I really don't want to do the brake lines. Haha. -ha. Anyway, this here, we start with the Lexus drive shaft. Now, it's been modified already a bit, and I'll explain to you what has happened. So on what we call an import uh, or a foreign drive shaft, we have these types of three hole flanges on both sides. This side attaches to a matching flange on the Lexus transmission. And then we go to the other side and this is more of what our American red blooded drive shafts look like they have this yoke and a universal joint so this has been already modified i took this drive shaft which on this end also had a three flange um, bracket i had that cut off and i had this drive shaft i think shortened a bit and this type of universal joint i don't know if this is like a 1310 or 1330 whatever it fits my differential and we no longer need this uh, rubber bushing dump dampener on this end so that goes away so I had this drive shaft installed and spent money on having it shortened and the uh, universal joint put on there and my buddies looked at it on their truck and said hey how is this gonna work and so can you guys spot the problem let me explain so this end here goes to the rear end of the truck okay the rear axle this middle it's what we call like a middle donut mid, middle support bracket here this gets attached to a cross member on the frame and then here is the other shaft this shaft attaches to the uh, lexus transmission so the problem is that this support bracket is on the wrong end this should be on this piece which is stationary which is fixed See, the problem with the Lexus transmission is that it does not have a traditional, like, American type of yoke on here that goes in and out of a transmission like a turbo 350 or a 400, right? So this cannot s slide in and out, right? So I thought, okay, well, there's this piece. Why don't we just, it's like a telescoping piece, telescoping, however you say that word. This can go in and out here, but it's not really designed to move that much. And you put it in and there's this big old nut on here that, of course, I can't turn it by hand, but you just tightened it. And so I believe this is just to adjust it to the right length on a Lexus. The Lexus has a independent rear suspension, IRS, right? These American trucks don't have that. They have what's called a live axle or an open diff. And meaning live means it moves, okay? So it goes up and down and it kind of, I think, goes even forward a bit and the back a bit. Depends, you know, how fast you're jumping the speed bumps when picking up your kids from your elementary school or at the mall. Anyway, this is a problem on this drive shaft. This piece here is supposed to move in and out, but as you can see, the bracket goes here and this piece ends up being fixed. So this drive shaft doesn't work for me. Now, I'm no expert. I'm definitely no expert on IRS, independent rear suspensions. That um, has only been available in America in the last six to eight months. Kidding, folks. It's probably been like a year or two that we've had IRS. But no, our trucks have live axles. They um, are not independent. They're dependent suspension. So now I'm going to bring out uh, another drive shaft that I bought. So this Lexus, we started talking about it, but technically this is a second drive shaft for this truck. The first drive shaft was a single piece, uh, original to the truck, 
that I just knew wouldn't work from the get-go, so I tried the Lexus one. Okay guys, now we're looking at a um, second drive shaft here, which is like third one that I've owned, okay? I went out and I purchased this longer drive shaft. This is an American drive shaft, and I was under the impression that I'm just buying a two-piece drive shaft for my truck. These trucks came with either a one-piece drive shaft, a single tube, or two, two-piece. Okay, and they also come in short bed lengths and long bed lengths, okay? Short box and long box. So the short box trucks in America are called C10s, and um, I'm sorry, the half-ton trucks are called C10s. The three-quarter ton trucks are called C20s. So here we're looking at these two drive shafts and let's kind of look at some of the differences here. So here on typically on American trucks, this is what goes inside the transmission. So instead of having this three bolt flange doohickey that just gets bolted on and is fixed and does not move forward and back into the transmission and out, this guy here actually is designed to Slide, it slides into the transmission's output shaft like that and then it slides in and out of it and that's by design you want that okay now can you see the difference here the key difference in the middle of these drive shafts again on the first one on the lexus one the rear piece is fixed the donut or the center support bearing is on the part that goes to the differential it's not on the american truck which is what we want it is on the fixed part okay that um, will not be going in and out of the um, transmission okay and instead this part here rides on top of this shaft okay and this is what we want all right all we have to do on this drive shaft is shorten it and have that welded onto here. All right, but we're not done yet because I was sold this drive shaft as in error or by mistake. The seller thought that this was just a long bed drive shaft. Sorry, I'm winded. I'm running in and out doing powder coating and making this video while it's coating or baking. Anyway, and it's hot in here. So he sold it to me. Honest guy, really liked the guy. And, I, and we thought that this was from a long bed. It's actually longer than a long bed by a foot. So now we're thinking it's not even a, a three quarter ton truck, but it's actually a one ton truck. So yes, I can shorten it. The problem that I'm having and why I went out and bought yet another drive shaft for a total of four is because I finally found a true, um, a long bed drive shaft. Now, ideally, I would f try to find a short bed drive shaft, and I know you're probably sitting there going, okay, what the hell is he talking about? But um, the short bed drive shafts are impossible to find because the short bed trucks like this guy, although this is an ugly truck lane, are very desirable because they're kind of, they can be hot rotted and they won't serve any function or uh, working purpose as a work truck, whereas the long beds, are work trucks right and and people don't like the long beds because they're technically uglier you know it's like long bed and short bed it's like a two-door car versus a four-door car and when it comes to hot rods four doors are like your grandma grocery getters okay anyway so the problem with this drive shaft which is really nice and strong is twofold one it does this bracket the center support bracket does not fit it does not fit my center of my truck cross member all right it does not fit on there so i would have to modify this nice bracket and the other thing is that i would have to shorten it both on the back and on the front and weld on the piece that goes in the transmission and I, I'm, that's a huge risk for me because I really have no anchor point, right? So that's why I went out and I bought a true um, long bed drive shaft, which the rear part will be, won't have to be messed with, okay? It will just bolt up and fit. 
and then I can bolt up its center bearing and then all I have to do on that one is just modify the front piece. So hopefully you can follow that, it's less riskier. Alright, so we have third drive shaft on the floor, my fourth one that I got overall. This one is actually out of a long bed truck, but whether it's a short bed or long bed, the part from here being the rear differential to the bre uh, center bearing is the same whether it's a short bed or a long bed. That's what I've been told and from multiple guys who sold me these. As you can see the middle one is actually a foot longer. It's probably hard to tell on camera but it's, it's really about a foot longer. Um, so that one is out of a one ton truck and this one here is out of a uh, half ton and so that part now will just bolt up to my truck. I bought it with a different bracket. So this bracket here should actually bolt up properly to my cross member. Unlike that one, which is too big. So if we were to compare these. Nice, keep spinning. So I'm holding them aligned. Do you see how it's just like maybe half inch, three quarter of an inch too wide? And no, it will not work because my truck doesn't have leaf springs in the back. It has coil springs and therefore it has something called trailing arms and they meet up on either side of this bracket so there's no way a wider bracket can fit here okay you just cannot okay so I have to clean this guy up and uh, paint it I don't like the shop that shortens these to paint it they are excellent drive shop makers and the world's shittiest painters they will just paint it paint it like this like over the dirt and grime and I'm not even kidding and they paint 99.999% of their drive shafts black, which is how God intended. But they always paint mine gray, like they're just effing with me. So I don't want a gray drive shaft. I mean, can you picture a gray drive shaft on an EV conversion? I'll be the laughing stock of open inverter. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and run this one bolt it up to the differential right here then to my center support and then all i have to do is figure out how much i need to shorten it and have that three bolt flange welded on somewhere here right so that um, that's actually a short piece maybe like 18 inches it's definitely not whatever this is but this is uh, less risky for me only having to shorten one, one side than both. I've done this type of stuff before, measuring it properly and requested it from them. I'm a little bit concerned on how to measure using this three bolt flange because the way you measure these American ones, they have you measure right to the center of this, of the universal joint. Okay, so um, you go from here to the other side to that same spot and that gives them a perfect measurement because they know you know what these lengths are these are pretty standard like this is probably a yoke for a, a TH350 which is a turbo 350 automatic very popular transmission in the states anyway I wanted to share this because um, we want a drive shaft that articulates goes in and out freely on the back portion as the diff goes up and down as the rear axle goes up and down or you know turns and twists then this will go in and out here and save the transmission it, it won't there won't be any damage with the transmission okay because and also this this center support will carry the weight of the drive shaft because again I don't believe that the Lexus output shaft and flange is designed to carry the weight of the drive shaft. I mean, they even have their own center support bearing. So I think to guys who have Toyotas and Lexuses, Lexi, and especially guys in Europe who um, 
have BMWs. Yeah, like this is a no brainer to you guys because you have independent rear suspensions and you have two piece drive shafts and you can probably easy, uh, easily adapt BMW drive shafts to your Lexus transmissions if you're doing this type of conversion. But us Americanos, you know, we, we're cavemen, you know, we're running these universal joints and everything's gotta be bigger and better and heavier and bulkier. So this, this has been a learning experience for me for sure. And I wanted to share it. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this helps some of you out.